Okay, in the previous lesson we talked about cryptography, classical cryptography. Something that can be tampered with when you want to use a one-time pad. A one-time pad is a way to indicate that you are going to use the key for encryption only once. After that, you will throw it away. This is because if you use it, if you use it repeated times, the eavesdropper can gain information the more you use it. In order to make it 100% secure, you want only to use it once. This introduces the problem that you need to create a, and share a key every time that you want to communicate. Of course, you and your partner could have a list of keys locked down in your room, in a drawer, but someone could steal it. That is why we are interested in creating and sharing a key every time. Let's now talk about how to create a key using quantum optics. I will explain the BB84 protocol. The first one, the original of Bennett and Brassard in 1984, but the technology was not ready then and it has been in this 21st century that quantum key distribution, also known as QKD, has taken off. In the past 10 years it has gone from a laboratory scientific possibility to a commercial application. There is a wide variety of protocols. Some use polarization states, just like BB84, for example, could use that. Some use time frequency encoding. Some use entangled pairs of photons. This protocol can be used with different ways of encoding the bits of information. I will go over using the polarization of single photons. The key point of these protocols is the mutually unbiased basis. What does this mean? Well, it means that you need two bases to encode information that are orthogonal. Let me put this clear going to the actual polarization of photons. We mentioned in the previous lesson that we can encode ones and zeros in photons polarized vertically and horizontally. We could also do this in photons polarized diagonally 45 degrees and anti-diagonally minus 45 degrees. From what we know of polarization, if we send a vertical photon to a PBS, this will be detected vertical 100% of the times. But if we send a photon polarized diagonally to a pol polarizing beam splitter, it will be detected 50% of the times as horizontal and 50% of the times as vertical. This will be at random so that we can never predict how that photon is going to behave at the PBS. Same happens with a vertical photon if we rotate the PBS 45 degrees and make it a diagonal anti-diagonal PBS. So if we send a photon in the right basis to the PBS, it will always be detected correctly. If you send a photon in the wrong basis, it will be randomly detected as one or the other. But this randomness means that there is no information of the photon before interacting with the PBS that you can get. So, the only way to transmit information is if the basis is the correct one. Now, the protocol is the following. Alice sends photons with any polarization and in any basis. She can choose that and does that randomly. And this randomness is very important to avoid leaking any signature of the key to Eve. Alice sends photons to Bob Bob can select in which basis he is going to measure the photons. He does this also randomly. So far so good. But Bob does not know the correct basis. He will choose half of the times the wrong one and half of the times the right one. But if Bob doesn't know the right basis, how can he retrieve the information? Well, Alice and Bob share publicly 
the bases. They call each other and tell which bases they chose. They do this for a portion of the whole key, just to test the channel. This portion they will discard later. Then, when they know the basis of this chunk of key, they discard those bits in which they didn't agree in their basis, about 50%. From the remaining, they share their results. Alice shares what she sent to Bob, and Bob sends what he received. If everything agrees, then they are good to go. They can conclude that the key is secure, and they can use the remaining change of bits as their actual key. Anything they publicly shared is discarded, so no one gets hurt. Now, what happens if Eve is in the middle? Okay, kid. This is where it gets complicated. Well, Eve will have the same advanced equipment of, as Bob has. You can think of Eve as an alien with a fantastic technology. It doesn't matter because his technology has to follow the laws of nature, the laws of quantum mechanics. Eve is going to intercept Alice's photons, measure them, and then send them back to Bob. Eve will have to guess and select randomly the bases. This means that 50% she will be wrong, but 50% she will be right. So she might get half of the message, which could be a lot. Forgetting the bits that anyway Alice and Bob are going to discard because of wrong choice of bases between Alice and Bob, Eve is going to send to Bob half of the times the right bit of information, introducing no error. But from the other 50%, just by chance, half of those will give the same bit Alice was sending, even though in the wrong bases, but that doesn't matter. But the other remaining half, 25% of the total, if will be sending the wrong bit. This means that when Alice and Bob share their chunk of key publicly, they will see error in the key. They will see a 25% of error of the bits as wrong. This will tell Alice and Bob that the key has been compromised and is not secure. If is in the way and has a stolen part of the information of the key. Alice and Bob can discard this key completely and try again, or proceed with some post-processing to reduce the information that Eve has gained by following some error correction protocols. May science be with you.